So talking about a hydrogen atom, we saw that that the atom may have say 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 the nucleus and these orbits around it and each of these orbits and we will derive that they'll have some energy level okay it'll have say some energy level okay and corresponding to these n n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4 the lines getting progressively closer we have so many so many lines which ultimately ultimately going from n is equal to 1 which we call k shell to n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 4 and this this goes to n is equal to infinity right we'll be we'll be soon able to derive that the energy associated with the with each shell energy associated with the nth shell is minus 13.6 upon n square electron volts the nth shell where you'll put the value of n as 1 2 3 4 starting from the from the closest the closest will take the value n is equal to 1 so the closest has the energy so so i'm 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 writing the energy level so this energy level e1 is equal to minus 13.6 and this is in electron volts okay and the next one e2 is is nothing but minus 3.4 all these are in electron volts so so okay so electron volts e3 how did i get this i just put n is equal to 2 and minus 13.6 divided by by 4 will be minus 3.4 that's how okay and and when i put n is equal to 3 then this is 9 then this is approximately minus 1.5 okay uh, say 5 1 electron volt right and, and e4 similarly is 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 about about minus 0.85 correct electron volts and that's how it goes and n is equal to at n is equal to infinity e infinity is how much e infinity is equal to zero when n becomes a very very large number tends to infinity then this whole thing tends to zero okay so so and, and and we'll see this in 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 gravitation as well that whenever the energy is negative the total energy this is the total energy whenever the total energy is negative okay total energy is negative it implies that the system is stable the system is stable get that the system is a stable one okay now what happens you see this energy is negative but a smaller negative number what does it mean it actually means it is of a higher energy is it not its energy is higher than this no no minus 3.4 is numerically higher than the greater number than minus 13.4 minus 13.6 okay and what is the difference in energy that you can calculate so so what is e2 minus e1 e2 minus e1 is nothing but minus 3.4 minus minus 13.6 now that is equal to this becomes plus 13.6 so this becomes 10.2 electron volts they are all in electron volts right so so this energy difference the energy difference that we have here this energy difference is is nothing but but 10.2 electron volts get that this 10.2 electron volts now what is the difference between them okay 
What is, what is the difference between them? 1.89 or, or, or approximately 1.9. So this is about 1.9 electron volts. Get that? Where? Where 1 electron volt is how much? It is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Okay? So much. And what is this? What is this? This is 0.66 electron volts. Okay? A and so on. Now, what does it mean? What is this? What is this hole? What is this much? This is 13.6. You add 13.6 to minus 13.6, it will become 0. Correct? What do you mean by uh, 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 what do you mean by the energy going to zero? It is at n equal to infinity. That means this electron has completely left the influence of the nucleus of this atom. And this is when you say that hydrogen atom gets ionized. Okay. So 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 providing. How much energy? Providing 13.6 electron volt of energy of energy completely ionizes or ionizes. If the electron has left, you are left with H plus. Is it not? Ionizes one, exactly one hydrogen atom. Get that? It ionizes one hydrogen atom. Is that okay? Okay. And so, what do you? What, how much of energy would you require to to ionize one mole of hydrogen? Okay. For one mole of hydrogen, how much energy do you require? For one mole of hydrogen, how many how many hydrogen atoms are there in one mole? Can it? So you multiply 13.6 electron volt. So I, I'll write this as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. So many joules into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Correct. Okay. Now, now let me do that calculation. What does that come out to be? Okay. What is that equal to? So, so this is thirteen point six into one point six to the power minus nineteen into six point zero two two into ten to the power twenty three. So that gives you one three one zero three eight seven. So 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 if I convert it into kilojoules, I get about one three one zero kilojoule per mole. And one mole of it is equal to how many grams? How many grams of hydrogen? What do you do for mole conversions? You gram take molecule. gram molecule. That is how much? Two. 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 If if it's a hydrogen gas, if it's a hydrogen Two. gas, then that, uh, you you do not consider a hydrogen gas right now because there are other things. There is a bond enthalpy that comes into play because you'll also first of all require the the, the that bond of H and H to be broken and then you'll start ionizing, right? So it'll have the the bond energy plus the ionization energy. But let us say. You have got unimolecular uh, hydrogen atoms. Then, then it will require you to 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 it will require one three one zero kilojoule per mole. That is, it will require about for one gram of hydrogen, you'll require so much amount of energy to ionize all the atoms completely. Get that? And 
the wonder of wonders is that it actually is this much if you look at the table if you if you if you go and, and look at the table you actually find it to be so much okay and, and that is the beauty of of mathematics we'll soon be deriving this the, this minus 13.6 but ju just try to understand so what happens it means if the electron is stationed here and you provide it it with an with an energy in form of say light okay of of of, of 10 point of 10 point 2 electron volts 10.2 electron volts what happens this 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 electron will straight away from here jump to this and 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 it will no longer be seen here get that it will no longer be seen here if it is here and you give it say again again and 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 an energy of of about of of 1.9 volts 1.9 electron volts what happens it will immediately jump to to this and you'll not find it here or or you can do this that is some total of 10.2 and 1.9 that, that that is somewhere around around 12.1 12.1 electron volt of energy will straight away kick it from here to the third of the to, to the to the third shell right okay and it has been seen so what happens is if you have if you have a continuous spectrum of of light so you have you have all the frequencies right so from here to here you have seen that electromagnetic spectrum so if you have all these frequencies, right? So so I I, I just kind of kind of share it, okay? So so you have you have all the frequencies, okay? All the frequencies. I, I'm just just sharing it. It does not represent the color. It just represents that they are continuous, okay? It, the, I'm I'm just trying to to say that if it is smeared like that, okay? So it has, it, it, it is just showing a continuous spectrum, right? Okay. Just like that. It is say something like that. something like that okay now what happens corresponding to this corresponding to 10.2 electron volts you can find the the requisite frequency so so say my frequency frequency is increasing from here to here and and my lambda will increase in the opposite direction right okay they are inversely proportional so let us say let us try to find out what is the frequency associated with the energy of 10.2 electron volt? So, so what do I do? I do nothing. H nu is equal to 10.2 electron volts. Electron volts. Electron volts. So, so this is nothing but it will correspond to 10.2 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. That divided by... 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 okay this is the corresponding frequency okay so let us say you are shining the light of 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 so much of energy it means you are actually shining a light with frequency equal to so much so so let me let me kind of kind of Calculate it. This is equal to a frequency of 2.47 into 10 to the power 15 hertz. Okay. Okay. 
to the power 15 hertz. Now I, I want you to concentrate. Say, say then, let us say instead of this, I am I'm again shining, say, say another of 1.9 electron volt. So, so if H nu is equal to 1.9 electron volt, then what is the nu corresponding to this? Let this be nu 1, let this be nu 2. What will be that? Now it is easy to do. Don't do all these calculations. You divide the whole thing by 10.2 and multiply it by 1.9. No? Instead of 10.2 here, I want a figure of 1.9. Correct? So what do I do? I, I divide this by 10.2, this whole thing by 10.2 and multiply it by 1.9. So let us do that. So this divided by 10.2 into 1.9 is actually is actually equal to 2.46 into 10 to the power 15. Okay? Correct? Now what happens? Let us try to understand. Suppose you have a continuous spectrum like this and this frequency is somewhere here. Okay? This. This is your new one. This is your new 2 because it is slightly less, right? It is increasing in this direction, so the lesser has to come here. So maybe new 2 is here, right? Maybe new 2 is here. Now just, just see what, what happens. The frequency corresponding to this you will find is not there, okay? So you have a spectrograph, you can measure all the frequencies, you, 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 there, there, there is an instrument that will tell you what all frequencies the continuous spectrum has. You just shine it on, 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 a, on a tube of hydrogen atoms and when it emerges out of that, right, so, so there is a tube containing hydrogen atoms, okay, uh, of, of hydrogen atoms, not, not hydrogen molecule, right, so, so there is a tube containing that. Say, say this, you shine this light on that, so, so, so you, you, you shine it from here, right, the light comes in from here, this has everything, okay, now when it emerges here, from here, when it emerges here, this is your incident, this is your incident, and this is your emergent, what, what emerges after, after passing through the tube, so this is emergent, emergent. Now what happens? The emergent will have, will have, will have this frequency missing. If it has transitioned, if, if, if the electron has transitioned from here to there, that means from, from, from n is equal to 1 to n is equal to 2, then what happens? You will find exactly exactly this n1 missing from there so so when you analyze the spectrum after it has emerged it will look something like this there will be a the line will be a lot thinner than what I have drawn but it will be a thin line like that hold on let me let me try to make it thinner okay I'll, I'll try to make it thinner. So, so what happens is, is exactly the line corresponding to this. The the line corresponding to this will go missing. You see that thin line? That will not be there now. Then again, again maybe there is a transition from the second to third as well. Suppose it has happened, then you will find this is also missing. This line is not there. Understand? What has happened? It has been absorbed by the hydrogen atoms. So this emergent spectrum, maybe, maybe if there is a further transition, then some smaller one from third to fourth, maybe some smaller thing that, that, that we can calculate, no? The, the next transition is, is of how much? It was only 0.66, about, about one third of that. So, so, so new, new 3 equal to, so, so 
what I'm saying is new new three. Okay, the the new three is only 0.66. Okay, this approximately approximately one third of this. No, about one third of that. One third of this is, is somewhere around point point six seven. So so point six six. So so that means the frequency corresponding to one third of this is approximately 0.15 into 10 to the power 15 so so corresponding to this this will also go vanishing okay this is spectra whose some of the some of the photons got absorbed by by some gas somewhere is called an absorption spectra is called an absorption absorption spectra absorption spectra absorption spectra i'm sorry absorption spectra correct okay this is you should also understand this is only characteristic of the hydrogen atom when it is some other atom it will show some other spectra, uh, some other absorption spectrum. Okay. Now look at the wonder of wonders. Whenever you do that, whenever you shine this light, you always find only these lines vanishing. Correct? Only these lines vanishing. Always. There is not even slightly more or slightly, slightly less of frequency. It's always the same. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that that the energy levels of the of the atom, in this case hydrogen atom, is fixed. Okay. This tells you. So, 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 what does it tell? The absorption spectra, absorption spectra, is unique to a particular spectra is unique to unique to a particular element to the to a particular to to hold on to the atoms of a particular element to Okay, so it is unique to the, it is unique, unique to the atoms of a particular element, of a particular element. Rather, what happens? it becomes a signature okay it is a signature of a particular particular element right so if you see the absorption spectra to be this okay you shine it somewhere you do not know what the gas is and and you see this happening it has to be hydrogen okay so it is like a barcode or, or like a fingerprint right it is absolutely unique to 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 a particular atom so you'll be able to tell what atom it is okay now what happens now what happens is is they have gone to the higher level so so some electrons are here some electrons are here some have gone here now this is not their natural residence right they, they do not stay there so what happens after some time if you withdraw your your light the light that you had shown on them if you withdraw that they tend to fall back to the lower energy levels right so what happens what happens when 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 when
so when the light is withdrawn when light stops shining stops shining the electrons fall back fall back to the lower energy levels to the lower energy levels and what happens and they emit the exact photons they had absorbed while their energy while going up the energy ladder right while going up the energy ladder so if you if you if you see what they have emitted you know if you see what they have emitted in ins and i'll i'll try to kind of match it from here okay so exactly the frequency that had gone away exactly that frequency will be present here so you will have a full blank spectra okay when they emit the that that photon back you will have a full blank thing you you do not consider this that this is only to show you that that the that they are exactly the same place right so so this line does not does not mean anything that is just to show so you will have nothing and you will have just these sharp lines these three lines there so whatever was absorbed here got emitted here this is called an emission emission spectra okay this is called an emission spectra get it this is called an emission spectra now what if you superimpose the absorption spectra and the emission spectra what do you get you get the whole continuous spectrum back understand do we get the difference that is what a continuous and the absorption spectra is